Hi, my name is Rob McCoy of Ram Communications, and today I want to talk to you about something that is near and dear to my heart in telecommunications because um, this particular subject will make or break the delivery, the maintenance, and just your overall uh, experience with telecommunications. And what I'm referring to is the demark or the demarcation point. So in this segment of Telecom 101, this is what we're going to focus on. I want to help you and your staff identify what a DMARC is, what it consists of, and where you're going to be able to locate it depending upon your office building. So without further ado, let's go along for the ride and, and see what we can accomplish here in part one. A building DMARC is a central location where all the telecommunication services for that particular building are housed. Again, whether you're using POTS lines, you're using T1, or you're using fiber, maybe using old BRI lines, I don't care what the service is, all of those services have to be terminated, extended to, punched down into that DMARC area. The DMARC area may be on the outside of your building location, in a plastic box called an NIU, or a network interface unit. The NIU may be housing analog lines like POTS or Centrex. The NIU may also contain T1 circuits. Because of these different technologies, the NIU may come in different sizes, it may be in a different color, and it certainly is going to come in different conditions depending upon uh, the age of that particular device. Now as a side note, if your office phone service should experience static noise or inconsistent service, especially during inclement weather, rain or snow or windy conditions, then there's some things that you ought to check on specific to your building DMARC. If you locate that DMARC, take a look and see if there's any wiring that's exposed, see if the box itself is exposed to the weather. If there's any water that's penetrating that device, then you're pretty much rest assured that you're going to have a service interruption from time to time. Water is the enemy. If you see any type of water damage on your DMARC, make a note of it, make a picture, talk to your phone company or whoever your service provider happens to be, and make note of it, make them aware of the problem. That type of a situation warrants a trouble ticket and you want to get that remedied as soon as possible. Otherwise you're never going to experience good consistent service. In this particular presentation what I've done here is made a very generic illustration of a multi-story building. Your particular organization may be located in a standalone building so your situation may be a little bit different from another organization who might be a tenant in a multi-story office complex. Either way, there are some commonalities that we're going to highlight for you in today's presentation. Depending on the size of your office complex, the building DMARC may have uh, a few circuits. It may have several thousand circuits located in it. Here are some examples. POTS lines will often be delivered on a punch down or 66 block. Um, again, depending upon the size and the scope of the DMARC, may be located in what is known as a binding post, as you can see in these pictures. The binding post will have a number associated with it. So, for your own reference, if you receive uh, a new installation from a service provider and that refers to a binding post location, now you know what they are talking about. Your circuit is terminated on a binding post somewhere in that electrical closet. POTS lines will be labeled or tagged with a phone number and a carrier identification as shown. We call it a tag because as you can see those tags are usually orange or yellow in color and they'll have some type of writing on there that have been left behind by the tech. T1 circuits are often delivered via a smart jack and that smart jack will contain what are known as T1 cards. Your particular service is delivered to a specific card, and that card will have a label with what's known as a circuit ID. 
Fiber can be delivered in a variety of ways, but there are common features regardless of which carrier you use. First, know that fiber is most often delivered on a flexible conduit. And as the picture shows, flexible conduit will usually come in an orange or a yellow color. Once you locate that conduit, trace that conduit to a box. That box is known as a fiber panel. And fiber panels, again, will come in different sizes and shapes depending upon what's needed in your particular office complex. Like POTS and T1 services, a fiber circuit should be labeled with a circuit ID and a business name so you can identify which circuit belongs to who. As you can see, the building DMARC serves as the nerve center for every tenant's phone or data service. From this point, let's explore the ways in which your service may be delivered directly to your suite. In a multi-story office complex, phone and data services are extended on long cables. These cables are housed in the building DMARC and travel through a riser. Some risers are simple conduit that is piped the length of an elevator shaft. Other risers will travel through a series of closets. In either case, the riser is usually managed by the building engineer or it may be outsourced to what is known as a riser management company. In either case, the riser is kept under lock and key to protect everyone's services. From the riser closet, your service may travel through a series of drop ceiling panels, conduit, or both, depending upon the age and the technology in your building. Your office suite may have a closet. There may be an electrical room. You may have an IT room where your circuit is extended into. Have someone on your team or have your phone vendor locate those services for you. It's a great idea to identify where they're located. It's a wonderful idea to take pictures of those devices or those services so that you have those for your quick reference. When Murphy's Law strikes and you're not organized, you're going to get bit in the bud. And there's no reason for that. Identify where your telecom services are located, and it's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of money, and it will certainly save you aggravation when the need arises for repair work or for upgrading services. Hopefully we've done a reasonable job at explaining and illustrating what a DMARC is. I hope that you find value in this. If you do, look for our part two on our explanation about DMARCs. In part two, what we're going to talk about is the need to maintain a DMARC and managing installations with your service provider using your DMARC. Thank you for your time and have a great day.